Hi, I'm Nathan Peterson, licensed clinician and OCD specialist. Did you know that not all perfectionism is bad? I'm going to get right into what healthy perfectionism and unhealthy perfectionism look like. Healthy perfectionism is goal-oriented, great organization skills, persistence, and maybe a high standard of yourself. Unhealthy perfectionism may consist of doubts, whether you're doing something correctly or not. Creating unrealistic expectations of yourself, maybe having a preoccupation with past mistakes. A high level of thought when it comes to making decisions and the fear that you might make a new mistake. Correcting or fixing something over and over and over and over again until it feels just right. So taking these two, we're gonna go over what perfectionism OCD looks like and what we're gonna do with these pesky needs to be perfect. So one phrase I want you to remember throughout this whole thing is that just right type of feeling. Individuals may have this intense emotion, often mixed with anxiety, if something is wrong, even if it's not. They may spend hours trying to correct something or do a behavior until this feeling is okay, until it feels just right. This could be reading something over and over and over again, just because the brain says you have to. And if you don't do it, you probably won't get that 100% on that assignment. You'll miss some crucial information that you need to. It could even be someone's gonna get hurt if you don't do this correctly. Where it tricks you is that there isn't a point where the brain says, oh, that's it, you're perfect, you got it. You are 100% perfect, you did, this is it, you did it. Individuals often feel like they just are so close, but they can't get there. Do your best. That's something we've been taught our entire life. Our whole society is based off of succeeding, competing with each other, but this advice actually starts controlling your life. You don't feel like you're good enough for anything. You have gotten that 100% on the assignment, but you know that extra credit point could have given you with that 101%, and now your self-worth is ruined. You are defined by your achievements, yet you're not happy with any of them, thus creating the need to correct it and perfect it all over again. Somebody may have an unrealistic goal of themselves that really is just unattainable. They try endlessly to succeed and they will continue to ruminate on this goal that's simply just not going to ever be met. And when this goal is not met, it only drives them more to continue working on it. Well, and feeling anxious at the same time and worthless. We don't want these feelings. We just want you to feel that desire to do something great and still feel confident. Some may say, who cares? If someone has this high goal of themselves, that shouldn't matter. Well, the difference between someone setting goals versus perfectionism is that perfectionism, they're feeling lots of anxiety, a lot of repetitive behavior and often unnecessary and it actually doesn't take them closer to the goal they think they're going towards. In short, perfectionists make no room for mistakes. They may be so preoccupied with the past mistakes that they've made and fear the future because what if they make another one? They may see others around them and have these high expectations and standards for them as well, not even just themselves. So this is what we're gonna do about these pesky needs to be perfect after I tell you about the sponsor NoCD. The NoCD app can help you on your journey. They offer affordable real therapy right on your device. For those looking for effective treatment, see if they take your insurance and head over to www.treatmyocd.com. So in short, we are going to mess this all up. We are gonna use what's called exposure and response prevention. Actually, we'll practice making mistakes on purpose. We will do something wrong. We're not gonna do anything that breaks your morals and your values. Instead, we are going to find that thing that matters to you the most and mess it up. Maybe I send a text message to my friend with a lot of misspellings. I might actually not read this page in my textbook just because my brain said, you need to read it again. I know you've read it 10 times. I'm not gonna read it. I'm going to do the things that make me feel nervous and anxious and respond completely different to them. I'm going to risk that people might judge me. My response is important. If I send a text with a lot of misspellings, I don't just sit there saying, well, I sure hope they're not judging me right now. Instead, I might be saying, sure, man, I hope they are like judge city over there. They're judging me. Man, I love making mistakes. They may be judging me, they may not. I possibly will never know. And maybe I'll never go to college. That would be great too. I sure hope I missed that question on my assignment today. Because I feel the need to reread this phrase, I'm actually going to read it backwards today. I'm going to purposely not know this thing that my brain wants me to know right now. What happens is that my brain learns that I am okay. The world doesn't change because I made this mistake. 
It's not an all or nothing type of deal. And when there's an actual problem, we will solve it. If someone judges me today, I say, bummer. That's too bad because eventually we are living the life we wanna live no matter what other people think. We can have those moments of satisfaction but know that it doesn't mean everything. We grow with this feeling of not fully being satisfied at all times. We don't always have to take action just because we have the feeling that something isn't perfectly right. So with the treatment name, exposure and response prevention, you are exposing to the fear that you are making a mistake and you're responding completely different than you normally would want to. It's almost a, I simply don't care kind of attitude. You're choosing to feel this anxiety on purpose. These feelings can't last forever, which is why we keep practicing it over and over and over again. But what's really cool is that when you keep messing up these things that your brain says you have to do it, the brain stops sending you these signals that say you have to do it because it knows, wow, you're the boss, huh? I'm not gonna send you these signals anymore. You don't seem to be following what I want you to do, but you gotta sit through a lot of that anxiety for a little bit for your brain to learn. What mistakes are you gonna make today? How can you be imperfect? You know what's related to a lot of perfectionism? This feeling of just right, which is talked about in this video on the screen. Go to it right now. See if you experience this as well. A lot of people do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.